I'm not entirely sure what this whole thing going on right now with this company called Sweet Baby Incorporated. I'm not at all familiar with like what's going on. I've heard that it has to do with like trying to assist brands in making their content more woke. I think you, you don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. We're going to watch the video. Um, because I think that's where, um, I think that's what it is right now. Um, so let me go ahead. Let's go ahead and watch this real quick. Because I'm not entirely sure what this is about. For most businesses, hiring can take a long time. Not for Susan, though. She uses Zip. Hello, yeah, yeah. guys and gals. Me, Mudahar. How's it going? Today, we got to talk about something known as Sweet Baby Inc. Now, I've been seeing this fly around on the internet for a fair bit. And ladies yeah, and gentlemen, it? it's been all over the internet blowing up. I've seen it in my comments section. And uh, obviously, pertaining to gaming, I wanted to give a chance and actually talk like about woke? this a little bit. But before we get into it, I wanted to bring up the sponsor for today's video, me, Mudahar. And not just me, Gamer from Mars, Oompaville, and Chris Collins. I know the weirdest blunt rotation imaginable. We are actually in the skin you, cream blunt? industry now. And are I'm you really? And I'm some white labeling stuff that other creators do. No, we're actually working with a wow. manufacturer that has created our own actual proprietary formula. And the reason why we ended up doing the skin care stuff is obviously we're into it, but other skincare brands are 100% some of the most complicated things. No, I'm not buying 60 products to put on my face and following a ritual, okay? True. This is not American Psycho. And I can say that kind of stuff because I own the goddamn company. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to understand, it is a simple product for people who just want to apply 30 seconds of their time to basically do one pump out of a bottle, apply it to their face, and mm. just get that routine out of the way. So if that interests you, go to our website. I'll link in the description below, gotoneup.com. That said, though, ladies and gentlemen, have to look into Sweet that. Baby Inc. Now, of course, this is a Steam group that you're seeing right here, Sweet Baby Inc. SBI Detected. And if you look at SBI Detected over here, the reason why we're talking about this company in particular is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is growing massively. So right now it has okay. 178 thousand followers right now. This is the perfect example of the Streisand effect, and I'll get exactly why. If I hit F5, that number grows harder and harder and harder. Mm -hmm. So to go over, the overview here is obviously this company is for letting people know if a game is involved with this company. So for, wait, sweet baby, for letting people know if a game is involved with this company. So maybe they're like a, a consultant? Obviously, I wanted to go exactly and research what is Sweet Baby Inc. So if you go to Sweet Baby Inc., they're founded in 2018 as a narrative development and consultation studio okay. based in Montreal and working around... Mo the Why do you say it like that? To tell is that how it's actually said? Montreal? More on. Based in Montreal and working around... Is that really how it's supposed to be? I know he's Canadian. Is that how it actually is said? Montreal? It's not Montreal, it's Montreal. I gotta hear that again. Narrative development and consultation studio based in Montreal and work. <laughs> I've never heard it said that way. Is that really how it's supposed to be said? Working around the globe. Our mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video game industries. We aim to make games more engaging, more fun, more meaningful, and more inclusive for everyone. Oh yeah. So it's one of these narrative consulting firms where basically, you know, writers or game companies, AAA stuff will usually end up going to just so they can get a better idea of how to make their games more diverse or more inclusive, right? Mm. You know, adding in characters that are people of color or, you know, multiple different types of, uh, you know, uh, I do you really need to go to a consultation company to like, or a consulting company to ask like how to add diversity to games? That sounds a little like, you would think that people would be able to do that, right? At least I think that. Unrepresented uh, minority groups that may exist. That's kind of the general vibe and the mission statement you're getting out of this. However, there were some posts from the actual uh, people associated with this company that are actually against the concept of inclusiveness, but we'll get to it in a bit. Okay. So if you look at some of their projects, they've worked on really big stuff like Alan Wake 2, a game I enjoyed. They tell you exactly that they worked on the character arc. Oh, wow, really? So they worked on Alan Wake 2, Sable, never heard of it. Battle Shapers, never heard of it. Usual, 
was that usual jade never heard of it and obviously we've heard of spider-man 2 and god of war ragnarok oh really they're a console they're a tax write-off really i wonder why i wonder why hmm voice and the sensitivity reading uh, I wish they could get a little bit more verbose about it, but of course, games like Sable, where they worked on the writing and character voice. And I've seen this game in the market, I've played it a few times uh, on the Steam Deck, actually kind of trying to chew through it. You've got Spoderman 2, God of War Ragnarok. But obviously, I want to look at more of their projects, so if we actually go over here, you can see that they've worked on absolute bangers! Like Oh, no. This, okay? Yeah, they worked on the script writing, the banter, cutscenes, barks, audio logs, etc. Now, I'm going to pause. It might be a little presumptuous of me to say, but do you think maybe the fact that Suicide Squad consulted them made the game suck shit? Just something to think about. Yeah, the game is crap, but I don't think it's necessarily crap for the uh, writing. I mean, I've seen the Batman dying scene at the end, which is, oh boy, <laughs> Ooh, that's bad. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I think what I'm getting out of this is that game just sucks because it's a shitty, it's a, it's a crappy live service pile of nonsense. And of course, they've worked on the proofreading and additional writing for the crew Motorfest. Never Dog, heard of it's it. a racing game. What are you doing? Now, obviously, there's a, a know, amount of gamers game. that don't necessarily enjoy forced diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion in their games, okay? And regardless of what your stance is on that, being pandered to or whatnot, at the end of the day, we're going to be looking at some of the people associated with this company making some rather crass statements that go against the idea of inclusion. Again, inclusion means all of us get along. And we necessarily put everyone inside the big bubble we call a melting pot, and we don't try to exclude anybody irregardless. Regardless of what, regardless of whatever racial, uh, you know, orientation or whatever they have going for them that they can't necessarily control. Right? I feel like that's one of the hardest things, though, right? If you're trying to account for every different um, minority group or ethnic group, and you're trying to um, include all those different things into um, into a product. Like, doesn't that naturally make it become, like, bloated? And then, isn't that where... I feel like that's where the the feeling of this game has been forced, like, onto... Like, the idea of the game is, like, being forced onto me. I think that's... If you were, like, consulting a, and then you're getting feedback that you need to include all these different types or um, different groups and different individuals because of certain qualities then like that's when you get the feeling that okay this game is literally just trying to push an agenda at least that's what i think right we don't we don't get born into the world with a character creator but god if we did i'd be looking like my arc survival character okay anyways let's get to the magical <laughs> fun here so because this steam group was made one account, the narrative designer for Sweet Baby Inc., decided to signal boost and cause the Streisand effect, where by actually blowing something up and trying to, uh, you know, uh, push people away from, you actually bring it to more eyes than it initially would have ever been to. Right. So this account says, the Steam Creator Harassment Group, Sweet Baby Inc., detected is led by this person, Cabrutus Rambo. Here's them trying to be slick so they don't get reported. Even with the discriminatory language filed off, the group itself still fails the code of conduct. And of course, they keep saying, hey, report the fuck out of this group. And of course, okay. when their account actually ended up getting protected, uh, they actually said, uh, hey guys, they got my ass. I guess I, I guess a few hundred gamers reported me where they actually ended up getting um, locked on X because, uh, again, some of their uh, posts were, were obviously not cool. It was incitement of actual harassment. Now, obviously, right. whatever this Steam group is and their disdain for this company, it doesn't necessarily warrant harassment. What they did was basically create a list of games that they found uh, were actually connected to Sweet Baby Inc. Now, some of these were kind of misfires. I think Starfield was listed inside here, but I don't think that has an actual connection. But obviously, games like The Crew Motorfest, anything listed on their website and on Steam, obviously, they put into a list. And the gamers who were interested in this, who wanted to boycott, basically knew what to boycott in this situation. So people are boycotting because of this group of people that are adding... I mean, 
Are people really that bent over about that kind of stuff? I mean, if the game is good, you're going to play it, right? Obviously. Like, at the end of the day, people don't care, like, what happened during the production. Don't care about, like, the difficulties. They don't care about, like, the crunch that developers had to do. Um... The only time that people seem to actually care about those things is when the product is good, you know. Then people are like, "Oh man, I wish I, I wish I understood like how the game was made." And then you realize, "Oh, it was made with crunch." Like Red Dead Redemption Two, for example, that game had so much crunch, and like people loved the game, but at the same time, like no one like bad an eye at the crunch factor because they were like, "This game is really good." Like, that was enough for them to be like, eh, I guess it's okay for crunch. Right? And that's generally what it was, right? Like, people did not want any game associated with the writing works that these people were involved in, right? That's pretty much what the general idea was. And Yeah, go ahead and boycott God of War Ragnarok in Spider-Man 2. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not going to say that you're missing out, but just something to think about. And again, if we're talking about boycott lists, those are not harassment lists, okay? There was no harassment necessarily from at least what I've researched on this group being directed towards anybody, right? Obviously, people started to dig in to the individuals who worked for Sweet Baby Inc., at least the public-facing figures, when they started to actually get attacked by this company. Based on the actual person tweeting we just read, the, the, the opening salvo seems to have started from these people who wanted a mass reporting of the Steam Group. Now, obviously, okay. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that there isn't a little bit of a uh, b political bias in this group to some capacity. In fact, one of the actual posts was real journalists, okay? Okay. N uh, why the famous gaming media don't see this problem? Your opinion. Because 90% of them are activists of the very woke kind, and from Gamergate, we know they all collude with each other in WhatsApp groups to push narratives and articles and uniforms. The communists have infiltrated most news media. Oh no, not the communists. God damn it. We can never get rid of those goddamn communists. Already trying to mess with my America. My freedom. Trying to take away my freedom dollars. Goddamn commies. Thought we took care of this in the in the in the arms race. They're still trying to ruin my democracy. Goddamn commies. That's it. After this, I'm gonna go play Call of Duty. I'm gonna kill some Russians. Yeah, and get their narratives from unknown, unseen dark sources. There are a handful of news sites still fighting back. Daily Wire, PragerU, you can see exactly what, what, what alignment you're kind of getting over here with at least some of these posts. Obviously, not every one of this group is of one alignment, but, you know, I've seen a lot of posts over here. Had a nightmare that I was an SBI employee. Makes me wish Freddy Krueger was real. The mental illness, the fragility, and the smell. Don't even get me started on the smell. <laughs> Oh no. That are uh, <laughs> that are wild, right? Had a nightmare that I was a SBI employee. Makes me wish Freddy Krueger was real. The illness, the fragility, and the smell. Don't even get me started on the smell. Yeah, I understood that reference. Your avatar has pink hair. Just f fought. I let you know. Just fought. Yeah, I let I think, you know. I think I'm getting what I. I, th I think I'm getting what they're putting down here. But again, the games that they were cells. listing over here, uh, if you're actually looking at the store page for the games, they they obviously Ooh, pointed out games like Assassin's Creed. Not recommended, Valhalla, not recommended. They obviously linked it through actual uh, features on... God damn, you see, that's why we don't live in Canada. $80 for Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Are you kidding me? Are you shitting me? 80 Canadian dollars for Valhalla. $80 Canadian dollars for Gotham Knight. Bro, keep me out of Canada. Keep me out of on Canada. On their website, for instance, and so on and so forth. So again, they're $90 for Suicide Squad. $90 for Suicide Squad. Like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where they obviously linked it through actual on, uh, features Did I see on that their right? website, for instance. Where'd it go? Instance and
90 Canadian dollars. I, I think you guys can see that. 90 Canadian dollars for Suicide Squad. Damn it! Suicide Squad. That's, that's crazy. That's insane. God, I hope you didn't buy that movie of horror. God, I hope you didn't buy and that. And so on and so forth. So Bro. again, they're not recommending any game associated with this company because of its, you know, uh, the, the DEI practices. So without actually listing any hard evidence of, I guess, harassment that this group was doing, uh -huh. what effectively happened was the people, you know, who worked for Sweet Baby Inc. ended up causing the Streisand effect and raising more awareness for this group. So obviously the people that are interested in this that don't want I don't know if I want to go down that rabbit hole game, know a list and that's pretty much how steam curation lists work anyways. Again, it's kind of funny how like you claim one side is harassing, but then you also end up doing the mass reporting and, and, and harassing in a way yourself. There's nothing inherently wrong with people compiling a list of games they want to boycott. If a market force wants to boycott products, it's totally well within their rights to do so. Yeah. Now, when I started this video, and I talked about, of course, this is a company that's focusing on inclusion. I think inclusion is great, right? But when you're looking at a company like this, where their whole, you know, shtick is that, it's pretty bad when some of the people behind it are making rather uninclusive statements. So let's actually read some of this stuff real quick. Really? So one of the people who works for consulting for Sweet Baby Inc., uh -huh. who uh, is Lego Butts, all right, this individual, Lego Butts, uh, known okay. as Maya, for instance, has been making some rather wild posts anyway. So oh. if you actually look at some of their posts, this is from Archive Today, meaning that you can grab this link right here, all right, alt control copy uh -huh. and you can basically just drop that into the, your your url bar and you can actually read these as actual statements right here now again oh, ladies okay. and gentlemen the reason why i'm showing you these archive posts is to show you that these were actually made uh, again there's oh, a lot really? of screenshots okay. floating around and it, whenever i cover topics like this i always try to get to the absolute source and truth of the matter so this individual started writing things like, I usually get grossed out when st when straight, white, rich people kiss, but even I think those two are pretty cute. Now, that's a In weird thing to be to writing. Again, when it what? comes to a lot of these diversity firms, it often feels like everyone is totally okay, but anytime you anytime you bring somebody, you know, from the Caucasian side, suddenly it, these suddenly it's okay to demonize one group. I don't think inclusion can exist when people start excluding one group of people. That's well, just yeah, weird. that's just in a perfect world. Hypocrisy. And again, I know the world isn't perfect. I'm not a fucking naive idiot. I wish we all did get along, right? Obviously, I think inclusion and diversity is great but it has to be applied equally and starting to demonize one group and putting up the rest is never going to bring us on a path closer to each other if anything all that does is instill division anyways preachiness aside then you found this one right here pay me to shoot down your white male lead game ideas oh, oh that's, uh, that's, mm. cute. that's that's wild now again these were back in two Ooh. ouch now granted that is 2014 so like were they working for that company back then? Um, probably not. <sighs> probably not. Right? <clears throat> oh, that felt amazing. Must hate. <laughs> probably. Game ideas. Ow! That's uh, that's cute. That's that's wild. Now again, these were back in 2014. But when you're talking about you know consulting for this kind of stuff, yeah, I would hope you wouldn't hire that person. Good. Then of course you had one. I had a nightmare that I was a white male gamer. <laughs> Dude, there's people in okay. war-torn countries right now where that's like that's like that that's like a good dream. That's like a perfect dream on, on a somewhat like decent day. <laughs> that, man, you live a very privileged, sheltered life if that's the case. So this one is a screenshot. I hate to be rude, but what's the point in talking to you anymore? Me on Twitter to men every day. <laughs> Seems like this person doesn't like guys that much. No, they really it's don't. The they don't like bad. white people and they don't like male. Of course, at some point you get some pretty bad posts. Oh, no. And this is one where it's to uh, a Marxist dog aboard all the... Ooh. Mm. <laughs> ooh. God's chosen people, I guess. That's, uh, ooh. Ooh, that's pretty bad. And of course, I, I tried to find the actual um, origin point of this, the, the context. Post is unavailable, but it's funny that this tweet was uh, violating X's rules against violent speech. I mean, no shit. 
Yeah. And then, of course, what's what's even wilder is this one right here. Okay, I don't even know if I can read this. At 20, yo, hot shot. No, but the statement when I grow up made me feel like a giant... Ooh, PD... Ooh, Ooh. PDF... Ooh, that's bad. Shut up, Jamie. I know I am. And again, I tried to get the context to this, but seems like the account owner limits whoever can view that wildness. So yeah, these were some of the posts that were made. But of course, one of the mission statements that was posted by an account known as Learning the Law said, we have to look at story and narrative as one of the things that we can innovate on. Like when you bring someone in from a different culture, from a different background, from a different gender, they're going to create something that we haven't seen before. The way we look at demographics is that we go, okay, the majority of our player base is, let's say, a white male. So we're going to make stuff for white males. But if you make something from the perspective of an okay. Asian trans woman and it's really strong, then it will work for people. People crave new stories. And if you want to innovate, even to stay current, it's not about... So, this might sound bad, but I'm going to say it and I want to ask. When the majority of the player base is a white male, what stuff do white males like? That's very confusing for me, just because, like, is it really that different compared to, like, what any other, like, um, like, like, African-American males, like, Asian males, like, um, Hispanic males? Is it really that different than, like, what white people or white males like? Well, we like making a girl character, but I feel like that's, like, universal. I feel like if you, like, hand me any Bioware game or hand anybody who is familiar with Bioware, like, a character creator, like, they're all going to make, like, a female. I don't know. I feel like it falls more in the demographic than it does, like, the groups of people about graphics it's not about hardware it's about opening up new perspectives for people so i explain it as is it's important to game development to diversify it's not just part of advocacy or activism it's going to make your games better alex also of course gamers are mostly white guys if you're making games for white guys try making games for somebody else maybe they'll show up you know maybe those people will show up right but i think for most people when they're mm. looking at this it's important that multiple perspective exists right a multiple perspective can lead to new game stories that you probably haven't heard of before oh well, yeah right but for them to say it's going to make your games better again i don't know how you're going to sit down and necessarily make the the gameplay better by 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 going down this aspect of forced diversity, forced inclusion. Yeah, it's uh, more and so. Whatnot. And again, forced like inclusion story is than like kind of uh, assessing it for myself. It's a little bit bad faith that I say that, but again, mm. generally, it's it's cool to get different perspectives. Look, some of my favorite games have been characters that I guess these people would call POCs. One of my favorite games is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Please. a game that has a black character, a black protagonist, uh, Carl Johnson. It's obviously you know that race is design because it's a game that takes place in 90s uh, a parody 90s los angeles uh, gang ridden world where obviously it's rife with you know uh, african americans hispanics and obviously that is a world where you start off as a gangster but carl opens up as a character that's pretty empathetic towards his family somebody mm -hmm. that wants something better in life he's proven to be quite intelligent when he can organize entire heists in Las Venturas. Oh, play yeah. Play Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Great title. Yes, if you have not played Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, play it. Do not buy the Definitive Edition, though. Do not buy that. Do not touch it. It is not worth your money. You're better off going to a specific site, downloading a specific program, and downloading a specific um, file type and running it on your computer. Don't even bother with GTA Definitive Edition. It's not worth your time or money. And of course, that's just one example of, you know, a diverse uh, or a minority character that isn't shoehorned into a video game. And it's a different perspective that can be offered, right? That's kind of what we're going with.
Whatever writing that these people did for games like, you know, uh, the, the Kill the Justice League nonsense that dropped, obviously that's never going to work. But they obviously did work on things like God of War. Uh, they worked on Alan Wake 2, which from what I've played are pretty decent games. Again, I think mileage kind of varies in the situation. But reading those tweets that I did not too long ago, that kind of rhetoric, that kind of discussion only serves to divide people around them. And that's one mm -hmm. of the reasons why this boycott is actually occurring and why games gamers are not comfortable with a company like this and it's understandable so uh, without the content wait so are we are people boycotting the company because of the the post that one person said is it because one person said it like they're not like the ceo or like anything like, if one person says it, should it really reflect the entire company? That they, they, they all believe this? I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's go. Let, we'll Next, I can't exactly confirm this story, but when you read things like, I just had a thought about trying this again with the photo of a young white person about to be ripped open, but I'm betting folks would immediately flag it as traumatic, and I'm guessing the image would get taken down before responses accumulated. I feel like these people um, are plants by, like, the CIA to just divide us as human beings against each other. Like, this kind of shit. Who writes this yeah, stuff? Yeah, who writes goddamn that? goddamn normal. It's just unhinged. Like, what? What are you doing? So some of the other clips that people were linking out was from a GDC talk in 2021. Now you see me representation as innovation. And of course, it's a 29 minute video and there's a couple of clips in it that kind of uh, struck people out of context a little bit or, or struck people out of, uh, out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Listen to some of these. Change and something that is locked in place. So something that does not want to change and something that is locked in place. So despite like the changing face of audiences, despite the changing face of conferences like this one, we still look at our core demographics and say, okay, they're white, cis, hetero males. And we cater almost exclusively to them. And the problem is that we don't just cater to them like, you know, here, here's something that we think you'll enjoy. We cater them the way that we cater to like a picky baby. We feed them the same thing that we know that they love and we keep on feeding it. We're like, here you go, we, you love it. Eat this, eat this, eat this. So that then when they get anything else, they react as a picky baby would, which is be like, whoa, no, thank you. I do not want this. And we've actually done this mm. so long that what we're doing is creating an entire nation of picky babies. And so this clip right here is kind of wild. Like it's, 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 again, I think the big problem is if you're like a normal person and you look at shit like this, specifically isolating the whole white cis hetero male crowd, which again would probably be like a mass majority of video gamers because yes, back in the day, I'm sure that was the only demographic that started jumping in yeah, to a pretty expensive hobby. Shit. I mean, gaming, in my opinion, used to be way expensive back in the day. So maybe that was kind of the roots of it. And obviously she's kind of going into this topic like, hey, maybe we catered to them so long that after a while, that's just all they ever wanted. Now, uh, I don't necessarily disagree with um, for the point that she's making. Now, the reason why I um, um, disagree with what the uh, what the point that she is making is the fact that like growing up, I played so many different types of games, right? I played uh, JRPGs. I played uh, open world games. I played um, kids games, obviously, growing up. I played, like, Jimmy Neutron. I played um, all those licensed games. I played um, Grand Theft Auto, and I played... Um, what else? Um, I mean, I played a, a bunch of games. It's just hard going through my memory banks and find, picking them all out. But all those games had different plot devices, different stories to tell, different characters. Like... It's just... I, now... I don't believe that that's true, the way she was saying it. Just because, like, I've played so many different types of games from so many different types of genres. There's just no way that all that was catered towards, um, in her words, a white, hetero, cis male. Um, 
Now that you've grown, uh, now that you've grown, what do you play? Have you stayed in one or two genres? Um, I would say no. I did not stay. I have not stayed in one or two genres. Um, we can actually look. Um, let's go ahead and pull up my Steam. Um, let's see. We'll do it real quick. Oops. So if we look at my games, we have Hogwarts Legacy. We got Left 4 Dead 2, Monster Hunter World, Stardew Valley. I mean, even just like the games I have downloaded, right? Uh, Yakuza, World War II Rebuilder, Warhammer, Stardew Valley, Monster Hunter, Left 4 Dead, Hogwarts, Baldur's Gate, Seven Days to Die. Uh, and that's not even going into um, all of my um, games that I have, just not downloaded. So at least for me, I don't, I don't agree with what she says. Let's see. To understand in this situation, right, to, to kind of debunk and discuss this point, um, I, I, I really, I, again, I don't appreciate the idea of, like, again, isolating one group of people. Inclusion can never happen when you're excluding one group of people right over here. And I do understand her point right here as well. I remember when GTA 6 was announced, and even during the leaks when they had, like, Lucy as a female character, there was a few people going, ah, oh, is Grand Theft Auto fucking woke now? Do they, do they, got, they got a woman in the game? Uh, women commit crimes? How is that possible? That yeah, seems really uh, dumb. Let me tell you right now, you might not think that a woman can commit a crime, but once you get access to a 9 mil in your hand, uh, everyone is a great equalizer, right? That's pretty much how yep. it works. And look, at the end of the day, my whole stance on this is the game isn't out yet. Obviously, if the game comes out and there's a lot of tropes in it that are going to make you groan, if there's constant you know parts in gta 6 where you know jason the 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 white protagonist is going to be shit on like if they have that's one of the things i'm worried about for gta 6 is the only thing that will kill gta 6 in my opinion at least from what i can think of is if they try to push that agenda onto you that like white people are bad uh women can be bad like just um like it, throwing all these inclusivity things, I think will be one of the main things that kills GTA six, at least from the story side of things, it will not kill, um, GTA's multiplayer, um, uh, which is that it will have, and it will have, um, shark cards. Give me one sec chat. I gotta see something on my phone. Okay have blatant performative talks like that and we all know what we're talking about with blatant performative stuff right like if they're generally going to shit on him make him like a total complete dumbass imbecile yeah. while lucia is basically running the entire show they specifically constantly reference that she is the more intellectual of the other one and this guy is basically dependent on her and he basically you know bends over backward for this yes we can all pretty much say that that's a shitty written script yeah. but until the game comes out nobody has any idea of the situation anybody that does offer for the overreaction i think most of the gaming society definitely like makes fun of them and criticizes them rightfully so mm -hmm. i get what she's trying to say but again it all falls flat when you're actually excluding people as an inclusive company like you're supposed to bring people together and that includes the people that the gaming industry was i guess initially catering to it's yeah. okay to have diversity and inclusion and shit like that but constantly doing and having these talks is not good. I cannot take you seriously as an inclusive company when you're actually excluding a group of people off the bat. And there's like a dozen other answers. They're all like variations on those themes. But kind of like a pseudo fun fact about me, that's slightly fun, is that I actually have a marketing degree. And so I wanna put on that like, to completely go like, just give up, we've, <laughs> we've screwed it. Um, but I think it's still amazing that I can be seated in a meeting and told that out of 12 characters, we all... Well, that's why a lot of, like, not only indie devs, but games that aren't AAAs are hitting the big times. is because they know what people like. They know that they don't need these things in games. Look at Pal World. Look at Helldivers 2. Look at Baldur's Gate 3. Um, what other? There's another one. Um, look at... Um, I can't think of the name right now. But, like, all these non-AAA companies are hitting hundreds of thousands of concurrent players at a time and are making so much money off of so little budget. And none of them have this, like, fixation 
on we need to put these things in the game. Yeah, almost instantly, overnight. Already have one black one, so there can't possibly be a second. I get that way too much. And I once worked on a project where they had an all white cast and they expressed their desire, like, okay, that's we can a lethal it up a company. Bit. Thank you, lethal company. I couldn't think of the name. How about this character is kind of like stereotypically French? So they have a beret and they have like a striped shirt. <laughs> and I was like, okay, if you need to do that, can we at least make them a person of color? And they said, oh no, that would be weird. They're already French. So I want to do better than this. See, the whole okay. idea, and I, I, the whole idea isn't about like, oh, let's make that character, uh, uh, let's make that, uh, let's make that a uh, character like a different race or something. Uh, I think the idea was that she was trying to counter the person that was going like, bro, but they're French. French people are just supposed to be whites, anyways, right? Especially in like 2024, it's also another melting pot society. There's French people that look like me. They t they talk in French, but they look like me. I think I think what she should be hammering is if you want to talk about good fucking writing. Probably don't write a stereotypical French character that would be out of Looney Tunes back in the day, okay? Yeah. With the beret and the cigar in their mouth. Dog, Nostalgia Critic made this joke over a decade ago. And again, to elaborate on this point, uh, I, I really do believe that when I, I talk about, like, obviously, uh, a good, well-written character, obviously her example of the French character... Clearly, you know, that was a stereotypical character, you know, wear a beret, smoke, eat a baguette. And I'm sure everyone can laugh at that. But when I think of a well-written character, no matter what their nationality is, no matter what their, uh, you know, um, uh, racial background is, you know, as an Indian person, would I love to see an Indian character represented in a modern, you know, AAA game? Sure, absolutely. Who wouldn't, right? Like, you know, that would be fun to see. He loves But Siege. I'm more interested in a well-written character. I don't like, obviously you know, seeing myself represented just for the sake of diversity. Obviously, that is that level of pandering only serves to infuriate people like me and everyone around us. And it doesn't really give gaming that mature look that it needs. Now, when I say sure, well straight up had a heartbeat well sensor. I really do mean characters that have depth to them. Going back to that CJ example that I had with San Andreas or Samus Aran, characters that have actual intrinsic characteristics or sorry, characteristics of their personality, of their humanity, that is more than just what they're born with, right? I think in reality land, people are more than the sum of their intrinsic characters, right? As an Indian person who was raised in Canada, my life experiences, my culture, my beliefs, what happens when my synapses fire him. are different than another Indian person out there. Obviously, if I was to see myself represented in a game as some blatant stereotype, obviously it's going to kind of aggravate me or whatever. And so when firms like this exist, I think at best it's when, hey, they're actually out there to write well-meaning human characters, right? But obviously looking at their past tweets and some of the people's past statements, it really feels like, again, there is a divisive rift in there, right? Like, again, you can't have inclusion when you are actually demonizing or chastising people of one specific race over the other, right? We've made a lot of progress, right, in civil rights and in race relations in like the last several decades. And to see these people nice. kind of have like an elementary view of that, of human beings and the interpersonal relationships we have, I think that's what insults the that's Damn. Sure. And are there people that are like, I'm not going to play that game because I don't like that character and their skin color. Yeah, we, we make fun of that, okay? We call those people idiots. Uh, giving them any form of, like, validity or even thinking about what they say is just feeding a troll. But yeah, when I talk about well-meaning characters, it's literally... Just want to stop? That was well played. Good shit. Awesome. That was good. Good job, Mudahar. That was, that was sick literally what I'm on about. Now, the reason why people were looking into this company as well, too, is that there's been a bit of a there's been a bit of a link to uh, something known as ESG. Now, obviously, why would a big AAA publisher or like indie games or like a company outsource to some people like this or, or a company that works in, in you know, a he managed to clutch a 1v4 uh, or inclusive writing. And that's because of something that is known as ESG. So to give you an idea, uh, diversity, uh, inclu equity, and inclusiveness, this is a term that is used, DEI, and of course it has a link to something known as ESG. So for instance, uh, when it comes to dog whistle diversity, right, this is actually a criticism of the situation, uh, what, it, what it effectively happened was dog whistle diversity is defined as the hiring of groups, uh, and you can, I guess, replace that with, I guess, inclusiveness of different groups for video games games uh, who have historically been 
underrepresented or subject to discrimination by organizations for the social aspect of environmental, social, and corporate governance, which is known as ESG. To investors and stakeholders, hiring these groups sends a coded message that the organization is more open to a diverse workforce. But to the groups hired, it suggests the organization lacks effective diversity management or inclusion. Okay. So obviously it's just designed to be window dressing, right? Like if you oh, write these inclusive okay. stories for sense. investors okay. who are putting money into these big game companies, they'll think, oh yeah, this is a pretty progressive, like, you know, system sustainable right you're, they're just catering like you're just gonna feel you're gonna feel catered to that makes sense it didn't really do anything thoughtful company we'll put money into it but for the people that are being represented you know pocs people like me or whatever right like if you just write a uh, you know a generic indian person for the sake of hitting that check mark it's not really going to do much for me in the grand scheme of the social issues and the social awareness i want to raise about my kind out there it's just designed to be window dressing for you know corporate points and so the link that it has, ESG, there's actually a definition on Investopedia about this, right? So ESG, for anybody that doesn't know, is an essential tool for investors to assess the company's sustainability and ethical performance. Ethical performance being the more important thing over here because we're talking about diversity, right? Which is the S in the ESG score. Right. So an ESG score is kind of like the best way to put it is like, you know how you have a credit score, right? Like this is how good I am financially in the world. Mm -hmm. What an ESG score is, again, it evaluates for how effective a company is, zero to 100, on environmental issues, social issues like labor practices, pro-diversity efforts, human rights, community relations, health and safety, governance issues. On a surface level, it's not necessarily the most evil thing in the world because it's just a score that shows you like, hey, these companies are relatively good uh, ethical companies, all right? Hey, this is a weapons manufacturer that pretty much employs some of the worst practices around the world and their entire business is dedicated to like creating weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, so that wouldn't exactly a help for ESG sure. score. Versus like a company that I guess is historically or traditionally doing good in the eyes of these organizations and they get, I guess, a good score. And obviously there's a few ESG rating companies, kind of like the Equifax of this entire situation. So this is like the Bloomberg ESG, the Dow Jones Sustainability Indexes, the Sustainalytics, uh, Refinitiv, S&P wow. Global, CDP scores, so on and so forth. So, so many instance, companies. If you want to look up like the ESG score of a company like, I don't know, Apple, for instance, right? A trending okay. ticker at the moment. What you do is you go to like, the, uh, the Yahoo Finance uh, website, you go to the sustainability tab and you can see that this is their like ESG score. So they're like 17 and they've got a significant controversy level. They're actually low. I didn't so even know Apple, they had stuff like that. Regardless of all its grandstanding is rated pretty low on the ESG score. And of course, this ESG score has some effect on the actual stock price itself and the investor's perception of a good company. At least that's what I've learned over here. So generally, again, to round it all back, the reason why people have been looking at Sweet Baby Inc. is their involvement in a lot of these projects, which for the gamers who are boycotting it, appears to be pretty harmful uh, in terms of the writing quality for some of these games, also that these companies can have more diversity, equity, and inclusion so they can raise their ESG scores and look okay. more palatable for actual investors. That makes in the a lot of industry. sense That's now. That's pretty much I had no general I, understanding. I had no idea that ESG score was even a thing. Now, that makes a lot of fucking sense. That makes a lot of sense and the general you know, story that is being pushed why people are kind of like boycotting here. now look at the end of the day i think that for a lot of the games that sweet baby inc has worked with and again to go back to their projects there have been a lot of successful hitters like god of war ragnarok alan wake 2 um spider-man 2 seems to have gotten pretty relatively great reviews yeah. obviously they've got one game in this list here that is absolutely despised by individuals yeah and again it's hard to say how much uh sweet baby inc has worked with some of these games entirely i think it's absolutely a very 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 key thing to talk about some of their members, some of the higher ranking members, making those rather off-color tweets in general. Yeah, that's Now, of issue. course, ladies and gentlemen, Kotaku jumped in and made an article saying Sweet Baby Inc. doesn't do oh, what boy. some gamers think it does. No, one company is enforcing diversity into all your favorite games. So again, right in this article, one of the things they talk about is Sweet Baby Inc. is enforcing diversity. It's happening naturally, they say. So inside here, what they say is, though these kind of social media posts argue that well, if they're happening naturally, then why consult a company who is literally telling you how to be more diverse?
If it's happening naturally, why do you need a company to help you out and put more into it? That's not naturally. You're being helped. You're being pushed along. You're, bo you're being told what to implement. It's not natural. That companies like Sweet Baby Inc. Because remember, they're not the only company that works in uh, diversity consulting. Somehow force game studios to include diverse characters and storyline, the reality is vastly different. Sweet Baby Inc. is a narratively narrative design company, meaning most of its work is focused on writing stories and dialogue. They are not a DEI consultancy firm. So again, when they mention this specific yeah. sentence right over here, it actually is contradicted. Well, by we the don't know if that itself. was Sweet I mean, Baby Inc. or not. Says it's founded in 2018. It is a narrative development and consultation studio based in Montreal and working around the globe. Our mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video game industry. We aim uh -huh. to make games more engaging, more m fun, more meaningful, and more inclusive. So for they everyone. have to have I mean, some type of like, like the work. Definition of a DEI consultancy firm yeah. in regard to video games so even the so they had to have some kind of um hand in playing for telling sorry here's a oh. For video game stories, they're obviously focusing on that area. Gaming media public out here, right? The mass publications are out there trying to downplay or outright make, in my opinion, improper statements about this situation. So, yeah, it's a weird thing to witness. And this is, I guess, what's actually aggravating individuals out there. It almost feels incredibly condescending to anybody that has basic reading skills. A lot of individuals say this is like Gamergate 2.0, and at the end of the day, all I'm seeing is a group of people who want to vote with their wallet and basically create a list of games that they don't want to support because they're associated with this company, which again, in a free market, you're absolutely allowed to do. So yeah, Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, are they totally responsible for some of the bad games out there? Again, nobody knows to the degree of what they worked on. And honestly, some of these games that people are criticizing, like the Kill the Justice League nonsense, isn't necessarily bad just because of its writing. It's bad because it's a crap tier live service game and there ain't no writing or ESG uh, outsourcing that ever had anything to do with that nonsense. But yeah, honestly, I can't say that I quite enjoy this company reading some of what their leadership has written on their Twitter accounts um, is alarming. It really is. And for companies like this, I don't mind if there's a DEI company out there, but if you're going to be inclusive and you're going to focus on equity, Instead of dividing our people even further, maybe Sorry we should all focus on, you know, bringing us together versus, again, all the, all those tweets did was serve to divide individuals. And that's where this division is coming from. And it's not something I am ever comfortable ever seeing. And that's pretty much where I'm going to leave things off of. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. And hey, if you want to try uh, one up, our brand new skin cream, the link is in the description. All right, chat, I'll be back. We're going to take a small break. Um, I'll let me go ahead and post this video in here. Uh, thank you guys so much. I'll be right back. I gotta help the fiance bring in some things. I will return shortly.